My sister is no longer on the carnivore diet, so I'm going to take you guys through what I've been preparing for her lately. And for anyone unfamiliar, my sister's been carnivore for over two years, might even be closer to three. And we use the carnivore diet to get her to a healthy body weight, you know, from being very overweight, if not obese. Uh, so my parents were giving her some birth control, messed with her cycles pretty badly. She actually lost her period for seven, eight months. And the reason we did this dietary switch is to incorporate more copper and magnesium based foods. And within about three weeks of doing so, her period immediately came back. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how we did that, starting with breakfast. Hi, YouTube people. I'm going to eat one of those delicious pancakes now for breakfast. Gina, what do you normally have for breakfast? It's either pancakes or what? Or eggs. Egg whites, I should say. Gina, someone said in the comments yesterday, his name was Waldo Ludowski, when you were eating the cheeseburger, that he wanted to lick the grease off your lips. What do you have to say to Waldo? Uh, well, well, Waldo, thank you for that com compliment. That's very nice, Gina. Very nice of you. I don't think Waldo deserves any respect, but okay. Are you single, Waldo? And are you my age? That's my question for you. Very unlikely, but we can hope. <laughs> so Gina, how do you like the pancakes? They're so moist and delicious. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, ladies, my brother is single. Yeah, if you feed these to anyone, these are you know, some of the best tasting pancakes you can mm -hmm. have. And they're full of fat soluble vitamins, B vitamins, very, very nutritious. Also calorically dense for energy to get you through most of the day. Mm-hmm. They're so good and moist. Plus, the good thing about this batter is you can put pretty much anything in it, really. I'll show you guys how I made this batter. I was recording for five minutes without realizing the microphone was off, so we're gonna give this another shot. It is the night before, my brain is clearly fried, and the reason you want to make the pancake batter ahead of time is because the flour needs to hydrate, the flavors meld, it just tastes better and makes a better pancake. So this is a classic pancake recipe like made with regular flour, milk, and eggs, but I'm using really high quality ingredients. So whatever ingredients you have that are the highest quality, you know, natural from a local farm, that's what you would want to use in the place of these. By no means is what I'm using today the highest quality, but it's probably better than what 99% of people are eating on a daily basis. So uh, in this bowl, I already put uh, the flour, the milk, and some honey. Uh, so let's touch on those first. Uh, so I'm using hard red winter wheat, which is basically all modern wheat. Like if you're eating pasta, if you're eating flour, baked goods, whatever, in the United States, it's probably made from hard red winter wheat. This is organic white flour that I put in here. I have another one that's organic whole wheat. Honestly, whole wheat versus white flour, I would actually go with the white flour. The reason you want organic is because the main negative aspect of grains is what we're spraying on them, not necessarily the grain itself. In a perfect world, you would have an heirloom variety of wheat, perhaps einkorn, spelt, or corson. Those are all better options, but with what's going on in the world right now, flour is pretty hard to come by, so I just took what I could get. Three cups of flour in here. Uh, we're doing two batches of pancakes, so the amount of batter we're making can probably serve uh, I would say eight to 10 people. So, but this is something that I prepped for a couple days worth of pancakes. So uh, keep that in mind. And then I put two tablespoons of honey. The honey is, you know, just a sweetener, extra flavor. And the important thing to keep in mind with the honey and the flour, energy calories. We're also feeding the gut bacteria, uh, possibly some minerals. You don't really have to use raw honey, you know, just something that's, I mean, organic would be even better and ideal. Uh, I just use this because it's, it's what my parents have in their kitchen, and this is for my sister. Uh, so we had all the energy sources in there, the honey and the flour. The rest of these ingredients are where the actual nutrition is going to come in. Uh, I also put uh, just a hefty pinch of salt, and you can put some vanilla in here. I'm out of vanilla, but if you have like a tablespoon of vanilla bean powder, that would be good too. Uh, the milk in here is some raw milk from a local farm. Uh, there's also this stuff from Whole Foods. I mean, this is better than the rest of the stuff, but it's still it's still not ideal. You know, if anything, this costs more than raw milk from a local farm, and it's ultra pasteurized. If you guys want to learn more about dairy and raw versus pasteurized dairy, you know, I have like a 45 minute video on dairy. But the nice thing about this stuff is, this has literally been sitting in my fridge for like two months. 
and it's just soured like buttermilk and it actually smells pretty good. So the nice thing about raw milk is that it technically never goes bad. You know, it has a super high amount of B vitamins, fat soluble vitamins, calcium. The only thing milk is really missing is like preformed omega threes as well as a high amount of iron or copper, which you can get easily in other foods. And since we are consuming eggs, you know, eggs do have some copper and eggs do have a decent amount of preformed omega threes. You know, so just by adding two eggs to this pancake batter, oh, did I say it's uh, two and a half cups of milk? So again, measurements, three cups of flour, two tablespoons of honey, teaspoon of salt, two and a half cups of whole milk, and then we're going to do two eggs. And these are organic omega-3 eggs. You know, if I was going to choose something from the supermarket, that's what I would choose. Uh, I haven't been eating eggs lately. I usually get a bad allergic reaction to eggs. So normally I would get them from a local farm. And hopefully later this year with Frank Easter Range Meat, we are getting you guys high quality grain-free eggs that we're raising ourselves. And as with the milk, eggs are very, very nutrient dense. I would say eggs are even more nutritious than milk because they do have the preformed omega-3s, but as with milk, they are lacking some iron and uh, some other B vitamins. Our last ingredient, which is butter, is also very nutrient dense, very high in fat soluble vitamins. Uh, this is just a New Zealand butter brand that I got at Whole Foods. You guys can tell it's kind of like soft and, and yellow from the carotenoids. Butter is just really high in fat soluble vitamins, A, K2, a lot of saturated fat calories, and it's really a good energy source and we should be getting the bulk of our calories from fat. So that was two eggs and that's six tablespoons of butter. And that's really it for these pancakes. Uh, so you can add whatever else you would like flavor wise, seasoning, whatever. And you could actually physically put some maple syrup in here. You could add some chocolate chips, some blueberries. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, baking soda. So, you know, baking soda, baking powder, they usually have aluminum added to them and you definitely don't want aluminum in your in your body. Uh, since that milk was fermenting, this might actually build up a bit of a fermentation base. Uh, and you could do like a sourdough pancake if you really want to. It would be a lot of work. Uh, if you want to incorporate air into these pancakes, uh, what you should actually do is separate those egg yolks and egg whites. You can whip up the egg whites like a meringue and then fold them into the pancakes. That's a lot of work. Uh, and these taste delicious as is. So that's the pancake recipe. This will just go in the fridge like this. Sometimes I put it in quart containers. Sometimes I just leave it in the bowl and cover it. You know, so this batter will last a week or two in the fridge. And then, you know, when I'm actually ready to make the pancakes, I'll just take some grass fed butter. We'll just do two smallish pancakes. And because these are a lot of calories. And my mother apparently put chocolate chips in the pancake batter overnight. So you could add blueberries, chocolate chips, sabotage your uh, your son's attempt to make his sister healthy. I mean, you know, chocolate chips that big of a deal? No, but the problem is when you're making something with super high quality ingredients and then you throw in a very low quality processed chocolate chip that has soy additives and chemicals and negative things, it just devalues what you're making. So if you're a little impatient like me, you might have a hard time you know, getting the pancake to cook through before you know, burning the, the side of it. So we have our two pancakes and you know, to reiterate, these are very, very calorically dense. You know, all of the ingredients in this are super concentrated, plus the butter that they absorbed. I would estimate just these two pancakes is like five, 600 calories. And then, you know, you drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on it and that it adds even more. I have to watch her because she'll literally dump a gallon of maple syrup on the plate and it'll be like maple soup with some pancake croutons in it. For lunch, my sister's having some grilled chicken. So normally my sister chucks this in the microwave, which I really don't like, but the way I warm it up is either on the stove top in a pan with butter or I use the oven. Uh, so today we're going to do it in some butter. Ooh, hey Frank. That is a lot of chicken. Today I'm just using Kerrygold. You, know, you add the butter flavor and more importantly you add some fat calories too, and otherwise relatively lean piece of meat. 
And you can do this with any piece of meat. Look, we got that nice brown caramelized crust on each piece of chicken in addition to the outside. We haven't had chicken for a little while, Gina. It's mostly been like deli meat and pastrami and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been a little lazy, but... Oh, hot. Mm. This requires a bit more effort, but a lot of the deli meat and stuff at the supermarket and Whole Foods isn't organic. So by buying the higher quality meat, by preparing it yourself, you know, in a certain way, you have something that's tastier and much better for you. Mm-hmm. You like it, Gina? Mm-hmm. And she's a very picky eater, but she devours this chicken. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely a good way to get, you know, extra protein in someone's diet, your kids, mm -hmm. elderly, whatever it is. This is a chicken recipe I've been making for years for my family, and it's kind of like a Greek, Mediterranean, Italian-style chicken. Uh, the main consistent things I put in here are just oregano and lemon. You know, of course, salt. Sometimes I add honey, sometimes pepper, sometimes butter. Uh, but the point here is just to get in some quality protein that's minimally inflammatory that tastes really good. You know, this chicken is super approachable, really, really tasty. The average person will fall in love with this. Literally tastes better than any grilled chicken you're going to get in a restaurant. Uh, these are organic, boneless, skinless breasts from Whole Foods. Uh, the fat content, it, it's still there. And it's, you know, by no means is it an ideal omega-6 profile but you know since the meat's pretty lean we're minimizing inflammation you know ideally you know you'd go to a local farm get you know 100 percent pasture rays that have a better omega profile you know that being said we're paying seven dollars per pound for chicken breasts you go to a local farm to buy some really high quality stuff you know chicken's going to cost you 10 12 13 14 15 dollars a pound just for quality chicken breasts so it will get expensive really quickly and i mean my family eats so much other stuff that is this much omega-6 that big of a deal for the average person? No. Uh, someone really sensitive like myself with gut issues? Possibly. You know, so I would say 90 to 95% of the population might be okay eating something like this, but I, I definitely would seek higher quality chicken. So these are big whole breasts, which are a lot easier to work with than cutlets, which I normally have. When we go to cook these, we only have, you know, six breasts to cook as opposed to 15 cutlets or you know 20 cutlets which gets to be a pain and you know the thicker the meat is the better you can cook it you know we can take these to like a perfect 145 150 degrees you know which is what white meat chicken is supposed to be whereas if these are really really thin that's hard to do so we got the chicken in a ziploc bag you know it is plastic ideal for this no but again the chicken isn't ideal either so this, this is very basics of seasoning guys we got sweet salt acidic spice Fat. You know, very, very basic culinary techniques. We're adding one of every component, not too much of anything specific. And I've, I've always eyeballed this. I've never been super, super specific when I've, I've made this chicken for my family. Uh, but you definitely want to do this at least, you know, 12 to 24 hours in advance. You know, if this marinates for, you know, two, three days, it only gets better. I mean, I'd say past two days, though, it's not really necessary. So I'll get a couple tablespoons of honey in there. And a few nice pinches of oregano. And what I like doing is rubbing the oregano as I put it in here just to, to release the oils. Nice pinch of salt, maybe a tablespoon. Uh, you could put thyme in here too. Uh, that would be nice as well, but oregano's fine on its own. Crack some black pepper in here. You know, again, this is you know, six, six thick chicken breasts. We need a lot of seasoning. Now you could put the butter in the marinade or the oil in the marinade. You know, it makes it easier to spread around. Uh, but what, what you could also do is just brush the oil or butter on when you're grilling it to get it to flare up. That's the main purpose. This is just some leftover uh, ghee I had from a recipe. This stuff's really expensive though. It's like, I think it's like $20 a jar. So, you know, you could get raw butter or just really high quality butter and melt that instead. You know, plus butter has better flavor. I just happen to have that on hand. Now, I've never used lemon powder before, but... I don't have lemons, and I happen to be doing experiments with this lemon juice powder. Um, so maybe we'll try it for this marinade. But normally I would do, I would, I would literally just squeeze like two or three whole lemons in here. Some of that lemon powder in there and see how that works for a marinade. So the flavor profile is lemon and oregano. And we got some sweetness from the honey. I'm going to try to get in here and get this, um, get this really nicely mixed up. You can really smell the um, that dairy fat in the ghee. It's like very aromatic and nutty. You know, the ghee is definitely going to add a unique flavor to this. So, 
you know, definitely try this stuff out if you've never had it before. This bag's just gonna go in the fridge. Again, 12 hours, 24 hours, two days. I haven't really experimented with length of time, but I would say minimum 12 hours is worth it. Uh, this, you know, of course can be pan seared, grilled, baked, whatever you wish. Just be careful with the honey on these because the honey will burn very quickly. So if you're using a direct heat, like a grill or a pan sear, you might actually want to try to, you know, rub most of the marinade off and get some oil or fat on there just so the honey doesn't burn. So I don't think I've used my grill in a few months now. I've been cooking stuff inside and, um, and eating raw. But uh, first day back chopping some stuff, we're going to grill the chicken for my sister for lunch. I don't need that much wood. Some of you guys might remember this from my videos last year, but this is just a regular gas grill. What I did was I took I took the grease grates off, the, the heat distributors, and I put an aluminum rack on top so I can rest wood directly on top of the burners. So what I'm gonna do here is just take a couple pieces of wood. This is more than enough wood. And I'm gonna light the burners below the wood. So with the really dry firewood and the gas start, we'll have a really big flame in a few minutes. That'll be perfect for adding that wood-fired flavor to the chicken. So it's been maybe four or five minutes and you know we have a decent fire going. So what I usually do with my steaks is I get a nice sear on each side and then I eat them pretty much blue rare. Since this is chicken and it does have to be cooked longer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a nice crust on the outside and then we'll finish them in the oven. It depends on how well I can control the temperature of the grill. Usually with the wood fire, it's too hot for me to cook the chicken without burning the outside. See, after only about a minute on that side, they're already kind of brown. That's because of the honey in the marinade. So as I said earlier, you want to be careful when you're cooking these because the honey will burn. So I'm basically going to, you know, flip these around a couple times, get that nice wood fire crust on all sides. Try not to, try not to burn it. You know, see, that's a little too dark. And the difficult part here, you know, is getting that really nice brown caramelized wood flavor without getting too much of the char in the black. And that's actually because you know, my fire is a bit too hot. So I'm gonna move the chicken off, off the heat a little bit like this. You know, give your family chicken that looks like this. I'll be very happy. This is really, really beautiful. Just, you know, deep brown caramelized flavor. In about five minutes, we'll check the temperature of the chicken. For white meat, you want about 145 degrees, so then after it rests, it'll go up to about 150. Uh, beef and pork, each meat has a different temperature. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about that, maybe I'll do a video on it in the future. So if you leave these in the grill, you know, for 10, 15 minutes to finish as opposed to the oven, you will get a lot more flavor. To me, it's just easier to toss them in the oven. We're still at like 92 for some of these. So the problem is, when we put this chicken on the grill, it was straight out of the refrigerator, so the inside was really cold. So, you know, despite 10 more minutes on the grill, what I'm gonna do is bring these inside and throw them in the oven because, as you can see, they're getting a little too dark. So the oven's on 300. I got the chicken in the top rack. We'll chuck on it in like 15, 20 minutes, it should be done. And when you have different sized chicken breasts, you have to, you know, check the temperatures of each of them individually. So like, like this smaller one is, pretty much done it's like 145 150 so we're gonna take this out now this one internally is still 135 so that could go you know five more minutes this one in the back you know 144 so we'll take that one out these three probably 10 more minutes this one in the front five more minutes you, know, you guys gotta you know unfortunately you gotta put a decent amount of effort to uh, to make it good so all the chicken was 145 150 I'm gonna let it cool off slice it put it into containers and that's going to be her lunch for about a week this is exactly why you want to take your chicken to 145 degrees it's so juicy and moist and perfectly cooked you don't have to excessively brine or marinate it to get good tasting chicken if you take it to 145. so my sister wanted pasta for dinner tonight as you guys saw from the past day of eating videos she was usually having hot dogs steak meatballs burger patties with cheese, just really carnivore diet based foods and you know high quality durum wheat organic pasta 
is what I've been giving her recently. So uh, again, as with the pancake batter, the flour we use in the pancake batter, heirloom is better. Einkorn, spelt, Coruscant wheat. You want organic to remove any agrochemical concerns. And here I have some really bougie expensive pasta. I think this was like five or six dollars for this. And this is a organic durum wheat semolina, but so is this. This is also organic durum wheat semolina. Difference is this is like a dollar fifty and this is five dollars. Uh, I don't, I mean, I haven't eaten pasta in like 10 years and I don't really know the taste difference between these two, but obviously go for the cheaper one if they have it available. Uh, today I'm going to make this one. And all I really do is I give her the high quality organic pasta with an organic tomato sauce that I see that they have at the supermarket. Sometimes I'll make it myself with like organic tomatoes, but you could even just put tomato puree on the pasta and it tastes pretty good. Add a little bit of salt on there and then I'll put in, you know, a couple tablespoons of butter into the sauce and the pasta and that's what she'll have. I don't put cheese or ricotta or anything else on the pasta as to not increase the calories and the palatability too much. Once you start combining you know the fat and the carbs excessively that's where you can run into issues uh, and you know we've said it several times the main purpose of carbohydrates in the diet is both to feed the gut microbiome as well as to give your body energy uh, so depending on your genetics depending on your ancestry how you tolerate fats versus carbs and also something like wheat as opposed to different types of grains since i'm italian since my sister's italian you know we tolerate wheat just fine. So this is the setup I've been using for pasta. I have a 12 inch pan here filled with water, mainly because I have a filter on my tap and I can't just fill up a giant pot with reverse osmosis water. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put, you know, a couple of tablespoons of salt in the pasta water like that. Let this come up to a boil. Then we'll put the pasta in. And then after the pasta is cooked, we'll put it in this pot with some pasta water the tomato sauce as well as the butter so we can actually do this right now i'll we'll just take this out and like if you go to whole foods they'll have you know italian herb marinara garlic basil to me all the ingredients look fairly similar i guess just see which one you like that tastes better or you know if you want to be really strict just get the organic tomato puree but just to save myself some time i'll put in the butter now just like that much you just want a little bit of flavor. You know, we're not adding this for calories or anything. Of course, I'm just showing you guys what I make for my sister. You know, there's dozens and dozens of different pasta recipes you can do with high quality ingredients. You could add some cream and onions to this to make like a pen of vodka sauce. You could do all different types of sauces and stuff with high quality pasta, high quality ingredients. As long as you feel good eating the food, you know, it's free of any negative agrochemicals, you're good to go. You know, not every aspect of the diet has to be, you know, just cramming nutrients down your throat. And if anything, you know, for a large percentage of the year, four, five, six months, you know, the foods we were eating weren't actually too nutrient dense. I'm not going to show you guys how I make this pasta. Uh, the one thing I will say is, you know, after you put this pasta in the water, you know, one thing I kept forgetting to do was to like move it around so it doesn't stick together. So definitely make sure like when you put the pasta in, just keep it moving the first few minutes otherwise you'll end up with like this clump of pasta starch so the pasta is done i just transfer it over with the tongs and i try to mix the sauce into the pasta so that the noodles don't like clump and stick together while they're cooling off so since the noodles are hot it'll Pretty much melt all that butter and then i want to put in maybe half a cup of pasta water i know this is really silly like frank you put a jar of canned sauce together with some pasta but i'm just showing you guys what i'm doing for my sister right now so and i'll let this cool off in the pot and this will probably be you know five six seven nights worth of dinner for her so gina's been eating carbs for like i don't know the past month or two now and i'm not Why exactly giving her i'm not exactly giving her like a small amount of carbs you know it's a pretty big bowl of pasta especially oh. considering She's only like this thing. 100 pounds and she hasn't gained any weight and that's because, you know, it's healthy food. There's nothing negative in it. You know, she has a low exposure to like Wi-Fi and stuff. She needs to go sit down and eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing so far that we've been doing in the pasta? Everything you make is delicious. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> it's so good. The sauce is perfect. 
I'm gonna try not to make a mess of it. And it tastes good without like mm -hmm. without cheese, without ricotta, so you don't have to add the extra calories. It's not necessary. Gina, do you have anything to say to the camera people? It's so good, his food. I would marry this pasta if it was a person. Well, my sister literally ate half the pot of pasta, so we'll see how chubby she is in a few days. So most days, that's her last meal. Uh, maybe, you know, a couple times a week, four or five times a week, she will have a snack. Uh, so I've been giving her some raw cacao, uh, some chocolate as well. So here I have you know, organic dark chocolate from Whole Foods. Um, these are some organic chocolate chip cookies. She was having some coconut cookies uh, as well. You know, just a few at night. Um, we were doing the, you know, the, the white cacao butter as well as a snack. Uh, but the chocolate was keeping her awake. Uh, that's why we switched to the cookies. Uh, what else did we give her for a snack? Sometimes she just had some like pastrami or some more meat too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just I just bought some jerky uh, that, that she can have for a snack as well. So, you know, maybe a couple times a week she'll have a little extra something at night. Uh, we were doing the Parmesan crisps and raw cheese. Uh, but we're shifting more towards, you know, I guess copper-based plant foods to get a variety of minerals in the diet. That's my sister's day of eating for you guys. An affordable, approachable, and delicious way to follow a healthy diet, primarily based around animal foods. If you guys would like to support me, uh, you can check out all the stuff down in the description. Frankie's Stream Range Meat, Organ Supplements, Frankie's Naturals, as well as frank com for one-on-one -on -one diet and fitness consultations. Thanks for joining me today, guys, and enjoy the rest of your night.